designed to ease the housing crunch is turning into a battle between the state and some cities and towns. In tonight's Question Everything, why has the MBTA community law become so controversial? WBZ's Paula Eben went looking for answers. In this David and Goliath story, Milton fired the first slingshot. It's not voluntary. We have a job to do, which is to enforce the law of Massachusetts. Here's why the AG is suing. Massachusetts is facing a massive housing and economic crisis. No one disputes that. In a recent survey, a staggering one in four 20-somethings say they plan to leave Greater Boston in the next five years. And unlike that iconic line from Goodwill Hunting, they're not going to see about a girl, they can't afford to live here. We are short 200,000 housing units in the state. The law requires an MBTA community to have at least one zoning district where multifamily housing is permitted within a half mile of public transit suitable for families. And the law has teeth. When Milton voters voted to reject the zoning plan back in February, the Healy administration sent a letter to the town saying, well then, you no longer qualify for $140,000 in state grants to improve the seawall and build a dock here at Milton Landing. 177 towns have to change their zoning by the end of this year. Most have rapid transit or commuter rail, but some are included as adjacent communities or small towns. So here's the question. Why has the MBTA communities law become so controversial? We hit the road to find out. Everyone thinks it's a great idea, just not near me. Mike Walsh is a former selectman in Westwood, a town with concerns, but making it work. They really have taken a lot away from our planning boards, so now it's kind of being forced upon us, and I understand why. Here we have the T station. Correct. Right? Yep. There's a commercial building across the way. That is correct. Someday, that could be built as housing. Yes. But it doesn't have to be. Correct. It just has to be zoned that housing could go there right. under that this law. The vast majority of communities are cooperating. But Walsh adds, towns that are pushing back say it's a one-size-fits-all approach that could create real growing pains. You know, there's a lot of infrastructure things. There's a lot of drain on schools. There's a whole Sewer lot of things. systems. Correct. So there's the train. Yes. Westwood has the first approved project in the right. state under okay. the law. So Apartments are going up at this old commercial site. Good example here of the kind of density the state is looking for. This building near the Islington Station in Westwood has 18 condo units on only a quarter acre and it blends in with the architecture of the town. And as you drive town to town, you realize each community's concerns are very unique. We don't have the infrastructure. So Great to meet you. For coming to do this. I Excited really to do this. It. Absolutely. So we wanted to talk to the man who created the guidelines for the law. Mike Keneally was Secretary of Housing and Economic Development for the Baker administration. A lot of this housing could be in downtowns, okay, that's good for local economic development. Again, in this post-pandemic world, how do we revitalize our downtowns? And also, if you create more diverse housing stock, you get more diverse populations in these right. places. Leading up to town election here in Lincoln, the signs are clear. Yes for a healthy Lincoln station. No for now. The battle is underway. I'm off for building more, more homes here. I think town should be able to figure it out, yes. Don't tell that to the town manager in Holden. I'm surprised that they had us having anything to do with an MBTA community legislation of any kind because we don't have train service of any sort. We don't have a train station. We don't have bus service. We don't even have a bus stop. Peter Lukes doesn't believe any municipality needs to mandatorily comply with this legislation. It was crafted poorly. It has been implemented poorly. The town of Holden's position is that we probably really wouldn't benefit very much from the grants, certainly not benefit as much as it would cost our community. So therefore, um, it's, it's not something that we want to participate in. Not to be overly dramatic about it, mm. the future of Massachusetts really is at stake here. We have to produce a lot more housing, and we're not going to be the kind of state we want to be. So the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court will take up the case in the fall. The idea, of course, David and Lisa, is by building more housing everywhere, that should help lower housing prices all over the state.